What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Bill and in today's video we are going to be installing some of the Rough Country E-Board uh, drop down steps on my Bronco. There's some changes going on with the Bronco. I did a little bit of a, a wrap here and uh, the bottom panel here I did I that's not wrap that actually just uh, plastic coated this. We'll see how long that lasts. But like this part, the wrap, and then the plastic coat underneath. Before I had the uh, rock rails on there, and I did the wrap, and then it had this like yellow strip under there, which I didn't love. The yellow strip there, and it's like, oh, well, I could plastic dip that, because um, see how that looks, because I wanted to do that anyway in these door sills, because of how bad the hinges look with the door off. So I was thought about that doing, just blacking that all out one day anyway, so that it all just kind of it doesn't stand out so if you take the doors off it's just kind of blacked out blends in with the interior and those hinges don't look horrible so i went ahead took the bodyguard rock rails off nothing wrong with these i've absolutely loved them i love the way they look uh they actually provide some high lift jack points two spots on both sides of the vehicle which yeah i see a lot of people riding around with uh high lift jacks with everything else stock so I'm not sure exactly where they're jacking, but that those did actually provide some jacking points. So that, now that I got it off, I kind of am liking the look with them off. And I've been going back and forth about getting some steps. My wife hates getting in this, climbing in and out. The kids always complaining about getting in and out. And I've been on the fence. I, I like the idea. I really like the uh, rock slide engineering steps. I like the idea of them. That the fact that they're rock sliders and a powered step. Don't love the look of them. They could be styled a bit better. I just don't love how boxy and squared off they are. Especially if you compare to how these looked. Where they're tapered. They match the body line. They kind of fit. If I could have this fit and uh, style with an uh, automatic step that would be awesome however no, no such thing exists and the other thing is the rock slide engineers are super expensive which okay i mean it's fine it you get a power step and you get a rock slider and and they don't have any co competition so they can charge what they want i'm not hating on them for that it's just, uh, it hasn't been in my budget to do so. And so then I noticed, so I was looking at like the amp steps and different steps and everything. And then I see that Rough Country just came out with their e-boards. It looks, it's very similar to the amp steps or one of the other ones. So that's what I ordered. Went ahead and ordered this. Now this is less than half the price of the Rock Slide Engineering. So my, in my thought, I could try to run these if I end up damaging them I could replace them run end up running a second set before I would ever need to and looking at the bottom of my bodyguard ones there's no damage no scrapes I haven't really banged hell out of them I'm not really going doing extreme rock crawling to the point where I absolutely need to have the rock rails I think the steps will be fine hopefully that's not a mistake saying that because I do still plan to go off-road but we'll see if we start banging these up I'll put the, I'll put the rock rails back on but in the meantime I'm going to go ahead and install these rough country e-boards make it easier to get in and out and I think it'll it just gives it a nice clean look because basically the black boards should just blend in with the bottom hide those pinch welds and look good and then also function as a step. Okay, let's go ahead and dig in. We've got this box is a king in one box. Inside that box is three smaller boxes and then two longer ones here and inside the longer ones obviously are the steps. So you get two steps and in this box we get two wedges. These, I don't know what these little wedge boxes are in here. All right, we've got one of the boards, or one of the motors, and two motors. So there we got two motors. I don't know if this is for one side or both for the front or what. Then I imagine, well, that's not the same thing. Here we've got a control module, some zip ties and hardware, some door magnets, switch, and a large harness. 
And we've got some instructions. Let's see how do the instructions look. Not a ton of instructions. Hopefully they'll suffice. And then I imagine this bottom box is just two more of the motors then. All right, well, I don't have to take, I already have the steps off, so it should be just ready to go ahead and get started with the installation. All right, so I went ahead and laid out everything. Each one of these is marked. So this is the front right, and each one's gonna have three bolts. Two that go in through the pinch welds, and then one that goes up underneath where the uh, mounts for your normal mounts would go for the rock rails. Uh, one thing, when I was looking at the hardware, I thought I was short two screws and then I didn't know what these two screws were. Most of these are this size and go in here. The back, both of them are the same size. On the front ones, this front one is smaller. So I think these are 13 millimeters and this is a 10 millimeter. The very front one is a 10 millimeter. The back one's 13. On the back, both of them are 13s. And the other side's exactly the same way. But I got everything laid out. Now that I got my hardware, so I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this into place. I said it's just gonna go right up to the pinch weld. I said this front one has a smaller hole, pinch weld hold also. I guess that's why they use a smaller screw here. And back out so you can get a better look, but I just got here and here. And then this one in the back, I'll come around the back, getting stuff in my eyes. But this is going to go up here in the front. It goes right up here. Probably should have did a better job at cleaning all the dirt out of here. I thought I did. But from the amount that's falling into my eyes, I apparently did not. But there, we got that started. Got these two started. And then it's pretty much the same for the back. Except for these, like I said, these are both the same size on this one. And then you got the bigger bolt there. Hold that into place. There we go, got this started. Then that kind of gives you an idea of how far down the step will be. Which is, it seems like, especially with the lift I have, will be perfect height. <laughs> now this one, this bolt is up here at the top. And we'll just get screwed in going forward. Right here you have your connectors, connectors, and all that. So the other side is going to be the, exactly the same. Except for in this center spot where you normally have, like if you had a rock rail, there's a, a center mount. And on the driver's side, in place of that center mount is where we'll put the uh, control module. So we'll go over that side and show you what I mean. So just like the other side, these are marked. Rear left, rear, or right. Rear left and front left, and then which will go in the same spots like the other side. And this control module was the other part I was talking about, and that's going to go right up here in the middle where this nor where there would normally be a center mount for uh, other rock rails. Let me get those hardware. It's a lock nut and a washer. Lay underneath here. It'll just sit up here. Already one threaded insert there, and then the other one. Note to self, get make sure wear some glasses or make sure you get all the dirt out from underneath here before you start this. Yeah, we get, we'll have that mounted up here, and then we'll have our other two steps. And they said those go on just like the other side did. All right, so now all the mounts and everything's in place. I got all the bolts started. Now it's just a matter of going through and making sure everything's tight. Double check, pretty sure these are 13, nope. So the small one is 13, means the larger one's 15. So, correction, I said these were gonna be 10s and 13s, this is actually a 13 and this is a 16. Let's go ahead and tighten all these down now. 
I brought these uh, ratcheting wrenches in case there was any of these that I couldn't get this into. This one up here, I don't think I can get that wrench ratchet on. So, okay, so there we go. We've got everything mounted on this side. It's tightened down. Everything mounted on this side, including the um, control module that's up underneath there. So the next, and see, I got the hood popped because we need to start running wires. Now we have this large loom here. This is where we want to start at this end. This is what's going to plug into the control module. And then we'll route all the wiring where it needs to go from here. Under here, each one of these connectors snaps in. And then these little round ones, there's a red, which will go to this red. And there is a little, a little tab right there, so it'll only fit on there one way. Let's rotate it till the tab lines up. Plug that in. And then we've got a black one. Black and black. Same thing. And that's all plugged in. So there should be a fairly short, which is going to be this. So that's going to go to the different motors here on the driver's side. Oh, it's even marked front and left. Which I mean, just looking at the length of everything else you can figure well that's going to go here but it's nice that they still labeled it so this will just go and plug in right here like so and this wire coming off is going to be for the light that'll go up here this wire will come back here and these waterproof connectors are sometimes a little hard to push on there so just make sure that they click and they don't pull apart we'll come back and zip tie all that up out of the way but now we have a couple more harnesses we have this one that's got the power in the ground that is going to run forward and up to under the hood we've got this one here which is going to run up over the frame over the gas can and then going to connect it's going to have two connectors like this side did for the motor all right so we got this it's going to it's got the thicker shielding on it this is going to go up over the frame rail over top the drive shaft and over on top the gas can and supply a run to the two motors over on that side so that's that one and then we have this one and this is going to go up inside the cabin and this is going to be what connects all of our sensors inside so not too tricky uh, just a bit of routing these once we get to running these inside I think that's going to be the trickiest part this part like I said it just goes over top of everything we'll make sure it's zip tied up out of the way this will run up into the engine bay which we've done a bazillion times with other things so nothing tricky there I don't think okay so on the other side I went ahead took these panels off I'll show you which ones they are just this panel here on the bottom front it'll come out and then here around the back this pops out I'll go ahead and move this up out of our way and then the last little piece is this one here so I'm just going to move the seat forward and we can go ahead and pull it out and around and then here on the back it's got one on the bottom and then you pull that out and then I'll just slide off the seatbelt thing there set it to the side where all the wiring for everything is run clears that up because we are and we're going to run our wire up on that side we're going to have to pull it through underneath this carp well if you have carpet under the carpet you don't have carpet it'll be under this rubber matting and 
I was trying not to pull this, trying to see if I could get away without having to pull these rubber mats out, but I'm gonna have to go ahead and do that. I do have these IAG cup holders back here, so you can't just pull the mats out without taking out the cup holder first. That's one thing I don't like about it. Pull all that out. We are gonna have to undo these centers so we can pull, pull all this up a little bit. And it really needs to be cleaned in here. I thought I cleaned everything since the last time we went off-roading, but apparently not. Oh, and I got some quarters. Nearly as good as I thought I did. But yeah, that's all the disassembly that needs to be done inside is these three panels on each side. You could probably get away without pulling these center con center pieces out, but it's just much easier without having to try to force wire under there or anything. Just go ahead and take them off one less thing to fight with then you can just slap them back on when you're done yeah let me show you on this side on this side on the driver's side we're going to pull this mat up and there is a valve right here if we go underneath you can see it right there pretty much we just want to pull, push that up or pull it up from the inside and it's going to open this hole so that's just going to push this up and out and leave us a hole and that is where we're going to feed this wire loom through. So I'll go ahead and feed that through there. All right, so this is the grommet. It's got like a, a breather valve in it. And basically we're supposed to just discard this and fill that hole with silicone. But we are going to, instead of doing that, pull this apart. So now we have this. I'm just going to cut this center piece out get this cleaned up and then we can run our wires through here and put that back in that way we only have a smaller spot that we need to silicone up all right so we've got our three wires that are coming up through this loom and this loom and then i'm just running that through like i said we just have a couple of gaps there to fill uh with some silicone instead of having that huge hole to try to fill run this all the way down connect that now these wires here this one is going to connect to, the brown one's going to connect to the driver's side magnets. This white one is the one where, where I have to run that crossed underneath carpeting. And then this dual black one, I guess it's two wires, not just one, but it's one connector here. And that is what's going to connect our switch so that we can control if we have doors off or whatever. Um, and that's also going to stay on this side. So I'll get this plugged in and we'll work on getting this wire pushed underneath over to the other side. I have a like electrical fish line that I'll probably push under through from the other side so we could pull that. And then uh, so I had shoved a piece of wood under here on both sides to lift this up so I could run this fish tape through here. I'm gonna go ahead back over on this side. All right, so we got plenty of wire on this side, pull through, push this all back down. Now, if you have these floor drains, you have to make sure, if you have the floor drains, make sure you pull this seal back up around. Close this, it seals up. There we go. Thing on this side, actually we'll leave this loose until we're done with everything else in here. But this is where we have our wire coming up. We got our wire here for our switch and our wire for our door magnets there. All right, so now that we've got these wires in here, here's our sensors. There's gonna be a plug here and that's just gonna plug in our wire that we ran underneath the, and then it's gonna have a grounding strap. There's a eight millimeter bolt right back here. And we can go ahead and just tuck that back behind there and tighten that back up. I just want to make sure we got a good ground there. And then we have two sensors. We have one that's going to come around back and one that's going to go around to the front. Now the back one is going to go right here on this hinge. So you want to make sure that's clean. Use the tape and just stick it right on there. And then on the front, it is going to go approximately six inches down from the handle. So six inches from the center of that is right above the curve. So we'll go ahead like so, that on there. And then we need to do the same thing on the other side. Similar, on this side, we've got the brown wire. 
connect this sensor to that hinge. Loosen this. This we're gonna make sure we run it behind the seatbelt. And on this side, about six inches down. And that again, right above this, or it's right below. So those are connected. Now, right where these are on the door is where you'll need to put a magnet. So these magnets will go like right here. So it'll go right about here on the front door. And what we'll do, tape them into place where we think they go. Should be pretty close right there. And on the back side, should be just right here on the door. We're just taping them into place for now. Once we know that everything's lined up where it's supposed to, we will remove the backing and actually adhere them. And we're right below, we're like right on the curve. It looks pretty close, we'll find out for sure. And say so we got this last one, and that's just gonna go right there to the inside of the door. So all that's set up. Uh, in order to test it though, we need to make sure that everything else is connected. So we'll go ahead, run this over. We're gonna go up over the frame rail, over the exhaust, over your drive shaft, and then over the gas tank. Now that that's over, we have our plug back here, and, and there we go. Now last thing, we have to pull this wire up here, and to do so, our line down. We'll go ahead and wrap this behind this mount. We'll go ahead and wrap it around the body mount. Hook our connectors on there, clip that on, and pull that up. Now we'll make sure the fuse is out for the power, and we can go ahead and connect the ground cable and the power cable to the battery. Now the ground can go to any chassis ground or anywhere that's a good ground, but we'll go ahead and ground it to the battery since that's the length of power wire that they gave us anyway and keep everything up here. All right, so now we are all set. We've got all our wires run. I haven't plugged the lights in yet down there. Power wires run, connected to the battery. If our magnets are in the right place, when I plug this fuse in, these steps, these motors will go come up since the doors are closed. Nothing happened. So, well, let's make sure we got a fuse in here we do all right so that means our so if we go like this we should close assuming that we got both of them on this side all right so and when they are lined up correctly they look like that so right there pull this now perfect now we gotta do the same for back here just to get that front one lined up, I just went ahead and stuck that right on there. Let's get a new piece of tape here for this. Looks like right about there would work. And yes, these are a little, say right there and up against the rubber, will be good. Okay, so open this door. They come down, close that door. They go up, perfect. Open this door, they come down. Close that door, they go up. All right, so that's it for this side. Basically just do the same thing for the other side and then we'll get everything cleaned up. All right, so driver's side's done. One thing I had to change up, I had to move the sensor up here. When I put it down on the bottom hinge on this side, no matter where I put it, if the, wherever the magnet was, with the magnet and the, uh, the sensor on that bottom hinge, the door would only close like this because it was hitting. So I went ahead and put it to this upper hinge with the, the magnet right inside there and that works. So I, I don't know why, but it was like, it was too thick to work down there for some reason. But over here on this side, it fits there and seems to be no problem. Yeah, open the back door. Close the back door and come down, go up. We've got the lights and the lights are just going to stick right up here and they'll plug in. Here we can get a better look at these round fasteners. There's a small tab in there 
her key in there, goes in, open the door, the light comes on, will illuminate the step. Now, I didn't think this through and I already plasti dipped this so really I'm sticking this to plasti dip and not to the paint so eventually it's, it's just going to come off. But I think we'll be alright. I'm actually going to run this through this pinch well because we got plenty length there. I think if we do do that one, nah, I should go about back further. And it's a little bumps there. I'll just do it to right there to the inside of that first bump there. And then do the same up here on the front. Now we've got more than enough wiring harness for everything. Some installations have done very straight strict with their cabling and you've got to get it exactly right. This one here seems to be a bit more forgiving so we're going to have a lot to tuck away and make sure we don't have anything dangling down around the uh, drive shaft. But yeah. Now I did tighten all these, which I technically wasn't supposed to do because you should just wait till you have the step in place. So go ahead and open that a little bit. So those are down. And we'll see if we can get this step into place as is. Now on the back side, there's this channel and it's got these two pieces and those pieces are going to go right into there. Let me feel where this one is. All right, well, the boards are in place. Right now they'll, they'll slide. So you want to make sure it's flat with the back here and we look good there on the front. I'm going to make sure when it's tucked up that it's not sticking too far forward. Let me get a actual straight edge instead of trying to use my hand. That looks about right to me. And we got one more bag of hardware. So it's going to be two of these going into the two holes on the bottom of those bolts. And we'll go ahead and tighten these down. All right, so step down. Looks like we're a good fit back here. Good fit up there. Door drops in. I think we're golden. So now all we gotta do is do the same thing on the other side. Put the lights on, put the board on, then we'll go through, connect the switch, and start putting everything together and zip tying everything up. All right, so this side's done. One last thing we have to connect is this switch, which I'm not sure exactly how the switch works. And it's on. Ah. So if you do on or off, Alright, so if you had all the doors open and you switch this to off, you could still close it. So if you had doors off and you lift them, switch it to on and it will lower them. So you still have operation with the doors on or off. Now let me see what the other side's doing. You know, both doors are closed, so right now this would simulate doors being off. So all the doors are off. Make sure you close both sides. Yeah, so we're good. So that's what the switch does. <laughs> There's not a separate one for the different sides, but you now you're driving, pull them up, you park, put them down, and then for yourself and any passengers, and then come back on, and that's if you have the doors off. If you just have the doors on like normal, just open and close your doors, and they'll go. Now, I'm gonna make sure that these actually have safety, so if you something in the way, yeah, it tried to kick up, but it doesn't, so you can just force them to stay down that way. Open it, close it. So yeah, I think those steps work pretty good. Very happy with them. Installation, feel nice and sturdy. So yeah, I'm gonna get the inside cleaned up some and then start putting stuff back together. I won't bore you with uh, the cleaning process, but yeah, she's a dirty girl still. I've already cleaned it several times but apparently not good enough so let me get it all cleaned up and we'll start putting everything back together.